Hi, we continue with our series on neuroplasticity, and I want to talk to you about an extremely important concept, the concept of inflammation. There are people that unaware they are making choices that create inflammation that literally is affecting their brain. So take note because this is an extremely important lecture. When we see around the world disease distribution, we see that disease has a certain pattern. For example, obesity. We find places that has a lot of obesity and other places in which obesity is much rare. And this comes across many diseases such as obesity, cancer, diabetes, and so forth. Sadly, for Australia, statistic tells us that Australia has, and New Zealand, a very high cancer rate. A lot of people are suffering from cancer. Is there anything you can do to prevent that? And the answer is yes. The same thing that we will learn how to avoid in order to affect our brain also decreases the risk of cancer. And when I'm saying that there's a lot of diseases in some places and a lot of and little disease in other ones, look at this statistic regarding prostate cancer. When you see the numbers of prostate cancer in America compared to Bangladesh, the difference is phenomenal, is huge. What are they doing there to decrease that risk of cancer? Look at this statistic. This is Journal Nature, one of the top journals in the world, documenting how the people from Japan, as they move to developed countries such as America, you see in the red color, that is the amount of cancer among the first generation, the one that just moved to that new country. The higher the bar, the more the cancer. And then to the right, you see the daughters of that lady. And then to the uh, right, on the orange color, you see the daughters of the one on the left. And then in the blue color, you see the daughter of the one from the orange color. Can you see that as generations keep on reproducing in that new country, even though they were the same genes, but the environment is changed, cancer rates keep on creeping up. And here you can see very clearly what I'm talking about. Here is a study of three places. Japanese people that live in Japan, Japanese people that live in Hawaii, and white people that live in Hawaii on the yellow color. Please notice how these are different cancers in different organs, how the color yellow and the color green, they look alike. As those Japanese people moved to that new country and started eating the foods and industrialized processed foods, those things started to create a lot of cancer rate. So what is that inflammation that I was talking about a minute ago? This to me explains the concept very clearly. I want you to remember the last time you poked yourself with a needle and if you remember, it was not a very pleasurable sensation. In fact, it hurt. The reason why it hurt is because God in his wisdom programmed something in your body so that when injured to the tissue is taking place, you tend to pull up in order to stop or avoid further damage in the tissues. So number one symptom of inflammation, pain. Not only that, it also became swollen, second symptom of inflammation. Third, it became red, third symptom of inflammation. And fourth, if you check the temperature and the other part you didn't poke, you will see that it starts to get warm. 
Those are the four classic symptoms of inflammation. Since the first century, uh, Celsus, a physician in the time of the Romans, documented those four classic symptoms by the name of calor, dolor, rubor, tumor from their Latin words. So the reason why your body reacts like this when we injure our tissues is that our body is, number one, starting the healing process, and two, is starting to um, isolate the injury so that this doesn't cascade and affects the rest of the body. So, for example, when you poke yourself with a needle, we broke the physical barriers, we introduced pathogens to our system, and because of inflammation, we were able to stop those pathogens from multiplying and continue to create havoc in our bodies. So, the issue with inflammation is that now we're starting to understand that many diseases are affected by this inflammation. For example, we saw at the beginning things like cancer, very much related to inflammation. But not only that, things like depression and dementia and neuroplasticity are impaired by inflammation. See, any time your body starts on an inflammatory response that is long-term and chronic, literally the neurons, the connections between one neuron to another one are being broken down. Is that good for neuroplasticity? Absolutely not. In the concept of neuroplasticity, I want connections. I want the more number of connections that are useful as they contain extremely important information. And check out this uh, important fact. Any time that we injure our bodies, inflammation takes place. Now, let us understand that there are two important concepts. We have what we call acute inflammation, we have what we call chronic inflammation. Remember when you poked yourself with a needle? That was acute inflammation. Body responded with inflammation and within a couple of days or even less than a day as the body finishes repairing the tissues, inflammation is shut down, everything comes back to normal. That one won't affect your brain. But there is another type of inflammation called chronic inflammation. And the triggers can be multiple. So when the body detects something that potentially can harm, it will turn into inflammation. For example, uh, things like bacteria, viruses, they can create inflammation. That's why, for example, it has been documented that people with periodontal disease, uh, swelling of your gums, those, those people are increased risk of cancer. They are in, at increased risk for heart disease. How come? Because those bacteria, unless you deal with them, they trigger chronic inflammation and will create havoc in your body. That's why you need to deal with this type of things. But also, things like physical agents, radiation, heat, cold, mechanical trauma, those type of things create inflammation as the body responds to the injury, but also things that are not alive, such as the food, can trigger inflammation. We'll talk about that in a minute. So basically, anything that injures the tissues create chronic inflammation. And a very wise physician by the name of Dr. Bircho from Germany put the two by two together. He realized that most of the diseases that we as physicians see day by day, and especially the chronic diseases such as cancer, such as heart disease, such as Alzheimer's, 
what they had as a common denominator that caused this problem was something that was called chronic inflammation. So those four cardinal symptoms that Celsus documented back in the first century after Christ, they continue to create problems today. And Acute inflammation is not that big of a problem. The body repairs the issue and things come back to normal. The problem is the chronic inflammation. As this keeps on feeding and feeding and feeding, inflammation in the body turns on, disaster at the level of the brain is taking place as neurons are being breaking down, but also you increase your risk for heart disease, stroke, dementia, and many other problems. So I'm gonna show you a few pieces of research and uh, some of them, uh, I'm the one that published this in the literature. You can go to ResearchGate, uh, Francisco Ramirez ResearchGate and find those studies. So for example, when you understand inflammation, you understand that one of the key parts that is involved with inflammation is your immune system. Your immune system starts to destroy you instead of helping you. And this has an, an effect at the level of the brain. For example, this study just um, uh, recently published was showing that motivation is linked to inflammation. In other words, people that have chronic inflammation, motivation goes away. That means in the morning when I wake up, I don't want to get up. I don't look forward to the day. I don't want to achieve and climb up because chronic inflammation will destroy your motivation and affect your ability to experience pleasure. Can you see why this is such an important concept to understand if we want to deal with neuroplasticity? In fact, it has been documented in the scientific literature how if you are depressed and you have chronic inflammation and you take medication for the depression, that won't even work well because as the brain is suffering the effects of inflammation, the dopamine, the pleasure, and other chemicals at the level of the brains are not secreted when there is chronic inflammation. Or this one, how brain inflammation is linked to major depression. In fact, things that cause inflammation will definitely cause depression. So here is the most worrisome part. Chronic inflammation is triggered by the way that we live, by lifestyle, and that creates chronic disease, heart disease, cancer, and so forth. But here's the problem. There is a silent link. In other words, the person can have tremendous inflammation Yet, because it doesn't give you symptoms, it doesn't cause any problem. And the person thinks that everything is fine, but they don't realize that chronic inflammation is destroying their body. In fact, this study is linking chronic inflammation with fire. And I can tell you, playing with fire is not good. Or this study how inflammation is called the secret killer. And how many times I have seen in the, this in the medical consultation. The patient, I can identify that they have inflammation and I tell the patient, you know, we need to make some changes to stop that inflammation. And how do many respond? They tell you, hmm, changes. I don't need to change anything. I feel good. There's nothing wrong with me, but they don't realize that because you don't have symptoms, inflammation is destroying your body. And as it says inside the magazine, those fires inside of you are literally destroying you. So think about this way. Think about 
acute short-term inflammation like your fireplace, that you have your wood there and the fire stays where it's supposed to, it hits the house, everybody is happy and content. Uncontrolled chronic inflammation, think about this way. You put so much wood on the fireplace that the fire started to come out where it was supposed to be and disaster is gonna be the result of that as you will increase your risk of cancer, heart disease, dementia, depression, and have a negative neuroplastic effect on you. So what are common sources of this inflammation? Well, we have things like cigarette smoking, very inflammatory, one of the reasons why you need to stop smoking ASAP. But alcohol, many times I see that they put wine as the most wonderful thing you can ever drink. Forget it. If you want to end up with cancer, Alzheimer's, and dementia, drink wine. It is horrible for your brain and your neuroplasticity, something that needs to be stopped ASAP. But also things like excess um, sunlight, Excess UV lights will create chronic inflammation. Beware, protect yourself from excess sunlight. But also things like food items. For example, anything that comes from animals, from cheese to chicken to beef and so forth, this is the issue why these things create inflammation. And so, by the way, things like sugar and white flour. These products are very high in something that is called arachidonic acid. In order to start inflammation in your body, when you poke yourself with a needle, when you twist your ankle, the cells break, arachidonic acid is released, inflammation cascade is the result. But when you eat animal products or refined foods, the issue is that when you eat these foods, the excess arachidonic acid start the inflammation cascade without having to injure your tissues. Now, if you were to eat this once a year, it's not that big of a deal. Inflammation goes up, you destroy a few neurons, inflammation goes down, and everything comes back to normal. But inflammatory breakfast, inflammatory lunch, inflammatory tea, man, what are you doing? You're putting too much wood on the fireplace and you are creating tremendous chronic inflammation in your body. And another factor, excess body weight. Excess body weight will trigger tremendous levels of inflammation. So, you can prove this in the laboratory. You can get your favorite uh, alcoholic drink, let's say wine, you put it on, uh, on a mouse. Many times you paint this alcohol in his skin uh, throughout the day, and I can tell you in a few weeks, you will have a cancerous tumor that has grown there. Why did that happen? Because alcohol created chronic inflammation and chronic inflammation changed the cells, creating a cancer. And the thing of it is, is that things like marijuana also can create inflammation. So in this study, you can see some of the factors that create chronic inflammation and cancer. You have tobacco, but more important than tobacco is actually diet. So Many factors are involved in the process of inflammation. So we talked about bacteria, viruses, but also stress. If you don't know how to handle your stress, your stress, I can assure you, will trigger inflammation in your body. In fact, this study was documenting how by the fact that you may have excess body weight, you create a pro-inflammatory state. That's why if you have excess body weight, as soon as you start losing weight, inflammation goes down in the body. And specifically, the inflammation that they call the belly fat, the one that is inside internal organs, that is the one that is tremendously inflammatory to the body. But here comes the good news. This is my own study published in an American journal uh, in America. 
In this study, we're documenting how this person with obesity, with high blood pressure, with diabetes, even though he's taking multiple medications, in a matter of 18 days of switching to a plant-based diet and exercise and rest and all these good behaviors, he loses in those 18 days 16 pounds or 7 kilos, we had to stop all medication. He no longer needed that. In nine months later, he has lost 83 pounds, 37 kilos. In a matter of um, 11 months, he has lost 50 kilos, 111 pounds. And when we do a complete laboratory, almost one year after he came for the first time, his cholesterol is normal, 3.6 the European values, 140 the American, LDL perfect, blood pressure perfect, prostate exam perfect, but the most surprising number, that laboratory that is called hemoglobin A1C of 5.5 tells me he is no longer a diabetic. His diabetes reverse. In fact, in a year and a half, after losing 64 kilos or 141 pounds, no longer obese, no longer diabetic, no longer hypertensive, no longer prostate problem, you can see the tremendous beneficial effect that this has done on his body, no longer chronic inflammation. And by the way, I'm not saying any heresy. Here is an article from BBC News saying that 70% of doctors and physicians don't know that diabetes type 2 is potentially reversible. And in fact, this other study of mine showing how the whole foods plant-based diet is the best way to lose weight and control inflammation in your body. Again, you can find that research on ResearchGate Francisco Ramirez if you put that on your Google. And that's why we know that emotional stress is linked to heart disease because excess emotional stress long-term will create chronic inflammation, will cause your arteries to clog up, increasing your risk of stroke and heart disease. And that's why it has been so thoroughly documented how obesity increases all kinds of cancers in your body because it creates chronic inflammation. So here's a nice summary of possible triggers of inflammation. We have alcohol, we have UV light, you have stress, cigarette smoking, viruses, bacteria, but also the way you cook food is related to chronic inflammation. Journal Nutrients, I'm quoting, it says, the association between animal product consumption and cancer was as strong as that linking tobacco and cancer. As tobacco causes cancer, animal products has been thoroughly documented cause cancer. So if you want to decrease your risk of cancer, it is an excellent idea to switch to a whole foods plant-based diet. Another fascinating study on the inflammatory effects of foods in the study, people ate an inflammatory breakfast that consisted of white bread, cheese, egg, sausage, and fried potatoes. All of them are inflammatory foods. And they compared to another group that was fasting just for the comparison's sake. You can see the result. As soon as those people ate that food, in a matter of less than an hour, inflammation exploded in their body. And that lasted for many hours. So as you can see, eating those inflammatory foods are not a good idea. Now, cigarette smoking is very inflammatory. In this other study, somebody was smoking just one cigarette and the inflammation lasted for more than a day. You may be saying, but doctor, I don't smoke. Well, congratulations that you don't smoke, but don't you do this. Eating two pounds or one kilogram of char grill steak is equivalent at smoking 600 cigarettes tremendous inflammatory response as a result of eating the wrong types of foods. In fact, the gene that has been documented 
for Alzheimer's, APOE4, is a gene of inflammation. So having one copy doubles your risk of Alzheimer's disease. Having two copies, 12 times more probable ending up with Alzheimer's disease because those people respond very high response with inflammation to, due to lifestyle changes. So what we have learned today is that chronic inflammation is triggered by the lifestyle choices that we make, and that's what's going to determine if you're going to end up with a chronic disease or not. So what we need to do, we need to understand that inflammation can be our best friend if we're talking about acute inflammation as it will help repair the tissues, but chronic inflammation, long-term inflammation is my worst enemy. So acute, my best friend, chronic, my worst enemy. So what are we going to do to stop that inflammation? Where is the fire extinguisher that we can use to stop that inflammatory response? Well, I can tell you something. It is not found on medication. In this study, it was showing how treatment for prostate cancer cost you $93,000, this new medication called Prevenge. How good is it? Instead of living 21.7 months with this medication that cost you $93,000, you're going to live 25 eight-point months. Is there much difference? There is not. I think the difference is going to be you're going to end up passing out with a single cent in your pocket. So it is better to follow the counsel from Hippocrates. Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And we know that vegetarian diets are one of the best ways of stopping inflammation in your body. So what we need to do we need to literally run to the farmer's market. That is where we're going to find our anti-inflammatory foods, such as fruits, vegetables, whole cereals, legumes, nuts, and the principle is spices that are not spicy. So the battle is in your body. What, and what is going to win that battle? You have all these pro-inflammatory things that many times our lifestyle choices can bring to our body and create chronic inflammation. But at the same time, we have more than 3,000 possible products that are found only on vegetable products that help us stop inflammation. That is why the Bible verse in Genesis 1.29 has a lot of wisdom. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. So the question is, who will win the battle of inflammation inside your body? Will you let inflammation destroy your neuroplasticity or will you make the right choices so that you can avoid that chronic inflammation?